affair and relationship autopsy. I male, 34, still want to be with her female, 32. Why the hell can I still love her? Autopsy. The characters are as follows, myself, my wife, she, and her colleague and friend, whom I will refer to as Mastiff, since he has the same first surname as my brother, which is a sad connection. The affair came to my attention in the first week of October. She had started frequenting the gym and avoiding couple activities, preferring to spend her weekends with friends. I felt skeptical for no apparent reason, only a gut sense that I now understand. I utilized the Find My Phone software that I had loaded on the new phone I had purchased for her as an anti-theft measure. This indicated to me that she was at a friend's residence. I inadvertently activated the alert feature. In my opinion, it would halt all activity, and by the time I arrived with my keys, clicking to notify our car's beeper, she had long since left, I returned home. She was in the restroom at the time. I now realized she was hurriedly erasing messages and informing him that I knew and that I could be at his home acting wild. I let her know I was home by opening the restroom door. I was terrified and delighted all at the same time. Major adrenaline rush, I summoned her. What's the deal with you and Masta? When she came out, she denied everything and claimed to be at the gym. My computer screen was filled with the Locate My Phone app. She was aware of it. She said that she needed to go to the grocery shop to pick up some items. She went there, and there was a bag. I began to distrust myself. The path from the grocery store to our home was not constant in terms of where I found her phone. She said that she was attempting to dodge traffic signals. She'd never gone down that road with me before, and it was our shop. I began to believe her. I couldn't reconcile the fact that she would lie to me in such an essential manner, since the repercussions of the deception were enormous, even if it was what I suspected. We'd been together for 14 years, through good and difficult times, and we'd always been one other's rock. We worked well together. I began to think I was insane, mostly because it was simpler than accepting the reality. She was supportive of it. She made it clear that having her honor called into question was not something she would readily forgive or forget. On the defense now, I explained that it was because things were not going well with us, and I was scared and maybe insane. To back it up, I'd been sleeping on the sofa and drinking a lot, which made me snore. I'd also gained weight and generally let myself go. I used to think that the booze was self-medication for a lack of love and low-level despair, but now I see it's a bit of a cop-out. I should have been the finest version of myself that I could have been. She did withdraw her devotion at this period, but I can only blame myself for how I handled the stress of a new work, as well as for taking her for granted and enabling her to pull away. We had maybe once, and it wasn't very nice. The bottom line is that I became an obese slob who, in her opinion, kept her awake at night. She couldn't sleep because of the noise, so I took up residence on the sofa. Madden on Xbox became my emotional release, as messed up as that sounds, and it also likely brought up memories and animosity from our early years, when I ignored her and played video games instead of confronting reality. I had begun a new difficult work and was focused with it. This was a significant adjustment for me, and one that I believe she liked. I had previously been living on a nice, but erratic income and had been classically underemployed, which had created a strain in our relationship since she believed I was being selfish in my pursuit of a job in my field, which is true, but I thought I deserved to pursue what I loved. In this aspect, I was correct. She used to like her job, but she didn't realize she had to work 9 to 5 in a difficult workplace to live the same lifestyle as me. I believe she felt resentful of the fact that I didn't have to work as hard to contribute, and when I did, it was something I enjoyed doing. She had paid the bulk of our costs in prior years. These resentments accumulate, and she has the capacity to remember these things long after I have written them off and forgotten about them, even if I was thankful. Her recollection of slights is extensive. She had become distant after I had visited my parents in a faraway state, and as soon as I returned, the work began pounding my draining all of my emotional energy. That's all for the backstory. I'm trying to be as self-critical as possible, since I know I messed up on more levels of relationships than a person should be allowed to without consequences. I just wish we'd spoken. That is all my fault. I'm more upset with her for finding another outlet. Let's fast forward to what many people refer to as Discovery Day. I went to bed certain that I was insane and that we would work through our issues, which appeared to be all mine, my distrust and our recent aloof conduct. I awoke in the middle of the night, sprang out of bed, and said, the truth will set you free. I walked downstairs because I was experiencing a mild panic attack. 
I matched the time on the iPhone app to the receipt for the items she had purchased. It demonstrated that she was nowhere near her gym on the opposite side of town throughout her absence. As she feigned asleep, I shouted at her. You lied, you lied to me, I sobbed, the entire weight of the truth bearing down on my shoulders. She came downstairs as I was having a mental breakdown. She acknowledged she liked him. I made a threat to depart. She expressed her love for me, and it was a sympathy thing with Mazda. She had given him soup out of pity since he was destitute and in need of assistance. Later, I went back and compared the soup tail to the receipt. This is not correct. She said that she paid cash for it and placed it in a different bag that she purchased for five cents. This is a falsehood she has maintained and will continue to maintain to this day. I suppose it fills a position in her imagination where she is nothing more than a comforter to this sad lonely soul. She enjoys convincing others to accept falsehoods she fabricates. She later told us in bed, after we had dried our tears, that she should have simply acknowledged she was bringing him soup. That untruth has stayed with me to this day. She was only upset that she hadn't a lied better or b stated a half-truth that I would have believed more. The following two weeks were hellish. I was filled with compassion and forgiveness for her. I knew I'd messed up in terms of treating her fairly, and I wanted to make up. She told me what had prompted her to form an emotional connection with someone else. We had some quality time together. The next week, she told her friend C that she was done with him. She said that when she informed him that we were done, he just provided nominal support. She stated it as though it were something I would be delighted to hear. It made me feel like the second choice, which I was, but she thought I should be okay with that. The true iceberg gradually revealed itself. She had not yet admitted to the reality. We were going well, and the white surface of the tranquil water was bobbing along with us. When I inquired whether she would ever harm me again, she looked me in the eyes and replied, No, I love you. There was a layer of brown falsehoods and lying under the surface. This is where everything went wrong. The falsehoods persisted, and she often checked her phone, hiding the number or deleting texts. I was so heartbroken, but so afraid of losing her that I didn't raise a fuss and simply believed what she said, even though I knew it was wrong. During this period, her position with the affair partner, Mazda, shifted from best friend to motherly, soulmate, back to best friend, and finally back to mother. She asked me what I wanted from her one night as I was laying in bed. I expressed my sincerity and devotion to her. I could tell by the expression on her face that I had asked for the two things she was hesitant to give up. I'm not sure when this happened, but she tossed it all on the table one night. Things were going well, so I asked her if she was going to harm me again. I was very naive. I'll never forget the expression in her eyes as she relaxed on the sofa me on the floor. She looked at me and said she didn't love me because she was in love with Mazda. I walked off, unable to believe it, despite the fact that she had said the same thing to me about someone else years earlier. As I returned to the home, she packed her belongings and broke down like a miserable beggar, begging her to remain. I stayed with my sisters for the following two weeks. I knew she was depressed and attempted to rationalize her conduct in light of that. I went to see her after getting drunk with a neighbor, and she agreed that I was the greatest thing in her life and that she didn't deserve to be with me, but that we would figure it out. We spent a significant amount of time messaging. I rejoined her shortly before my folks arrived. I requested that she ban Mazda's phone number and remove him from Facebook. She wouldn't sense it went against who she was and her freedom. This shattered me and I didn't have the courage to cut it off at the time. She was a member of the family, but when she came along on vacation with us, it was uncomfortable, and she was yearning for the other guy in a passive hostile manner. I emptied myself out and was given a token in exchange. When we returned, we broke up again for another month because she wanted space. This happened around Thanksgiving. I told her halfway through that I wasn't going to take any more abuse, even though I knew I would. I approached her with the goal of breaking up with her. She was forewarned of what was to come. I told her several ultimatums that I needed to continue with her, such as money that we both shared and openness with her passwords. She was repentant and claimed to have experienced a change of heart. She complied with some of my wishes. She handed me the cash. That makes me happy. I was frail. I thought she loved me but I had no idea her heart was divided in two. She was unable to provide me with what I requested. The next week had the same results, nice text messages, reconciliation, and eventually enough for me to be strung along. This is as much my fault as it is hers. At this point, I'm also in the fog, the fog that says, despite the facts, this person will change. Let us fast forward to December. She respects all of my limits. I'm showering her with love. We're having average love, 
where she exits right after, no snuggling or reconnecting, as if she has to purge herself of me. On some strange way, I feel like I'm violating her. I'm dubious, but she's sticking to the script. Here comes my gut reaction. I sensed it and drank to acquire courage. We argue over her leaving her job. I inquire as to whether she is still in love with Mazda. She agrees. I'm not going to be able to work with it. I throw her out. She emails me about love, and I'm all in. What the heck is the matter with Mepdate? A buddy notified me that they were together. While I was reading answers to the original article and understanding that she had been stringing me along as a backup plan for three months and used me to provoke jealousy in him and so secure a commitment. Yes, there was a rush of messages between Mazda and her, according to our phone bill. She had just written me an email in which she expressed her love and admiration for me. I had bought into it because, after I had thrown her out on the 22nd, she had suggested that she focus on herself, find herself, and leave Mazda alone for the time being. I felt enraged, took whatever was left of hers and threw it into the yard, texting her to let her know. She arrived approximately five minutes later, clothed in his baggy sweatpants. I took a lot of pauses. Her companion eventually arrived. I continued flinging stuff about. She complimented me on my demeanor. I inquired whether she was now teaching classes on proper conduct. When there were stuff that her vehicle couldn't accommodate, she remained all night. She was simply sitting in the vehicle, texting Mazda. When I awoke in the morning, she was loading a few items into the U-Haul. Mazda didn't show up, which was fortunate for him, since he would have been in the hospital and I would have been in prison. The landlords, our next-door neighbors, were watching the entire incident from their windows. I was mortified the following day, but one of them had been in a relationship where she had been cheated on and was reportedly cheering me on from inside the home. It felt incredibly amazing and therapeutic at the moment, and it was an overall positive experience. I had felt sorry the following day, mostly for allowing her to have such an impact on my feelings, and I naively apologized. I'm not angry. I'm simply sad for us, she said. This irritated me since I was expecting for mutual hatred so that I could be free of her machinations. At this point, I'm like putty. I'm still in love with her, but I also despise her. I hope I could cleanse my emotions and move on from her, but I don't have a clear plan for doing so.